In today's adventure of an episode, we're reading some more Am I the Yay Hole? I'm a little bit too addicted to reading Am I the Yay Hole? And yeah, it's gonna be a wonderful time, and I hope you guys enjoy. Am I the a-hole for not wanting my sister at my wedding since she's in a wheelchair and will take up all the spotlight? My sister 26 has been on and off out of the hospital. I'm gonna call my sister Anna. Anna got cancer when she was 15 and she was able to beat it. Ever since she's been having growths and anytime one appears we are worried about the cancer coming back. My issue is that she always makes these announcements that she needs to go back to the doctors again at the worst times. At the beginning I thought it was just bad timing but it's happened so many different times when I hit a milestone. My graduation my birthdays, my engagement party and anytime she makes an announcement that she needs to go back to the hospital my whole family flock to her I've had my birthday dinner turn into my relatives flocking to her for the whole night I had a dinner party to announce my wedding date for my relatives it was going so great and it was such a fun time until Anna told mum she needs to go back to the hospital soon everybody forgot about the reason for the dinner party and it was quiet my aunt even stepped in to do a prayer for Anna another event was taken over I went low contact with her after that she was invited to the wedding and it's in two weeks. I learned today that she's on and off in a wheelchair from my mum and Anna. She'll need to take it just in case for the wedding. I asked if the rest of the family was informed and she told me no. I told both of them they need to inform them. They told me they don't want to worry them and won't do that. I'd had enough and I told them you need to tell them before my wedding. Again, a no. I then informed them that Anna isn't invited. This started a huge argument about how I'm a ding dong. And my point is that I'm sick of her stealing the spotlight and that will happen if she rolls in with a wheelchair. Edit, I'm going to do a mass blast to all of my relatives, saying that she's in a wheelchair and I'm unsure if she'll be able to make it to my wedding, and to keep my sister in their thoughts and prayers. I'm getting ahead of this. Yeah, the top comment. You need to sit down with your parents privately and in person if possible. Explain calmly that you love your sister, but she's been using her health situation to hijack every event in your life. Give the examples that you gave us and every single example you can recall. Explain that like them, you are concerned about her health, but you would like your wedding day to focus on you and your fiance. It's extremely important to you and you're asking them not just to comply but to back you up too explain that you've asked her to inform everybody of her wheelchair use and she refused you asked her not to make this one day about her and she's signaling that she will not honor your request after trying to come to a compromise you and your fiance have decided that if she can't stop herself from springing this and continuing to demand everybody's attention at an appropriate time your wedding that it's best that she doesn't attend it's been 11 years her situation is sad but it's obvious that she's leveraged it and continues to manipulate everybody. You're not the a-hole. Yeah, definitely. And good on you, OP, for telling the relatives too. I hope it all works out. And yeah, if you had no reason to believe that they were going to make this all about themselves, then it'd be totally fine. But it sounds like they got a pretty good track record of doing this. And yeah, that's not acceptable at your wedding. So yeah, good luck and congratulations on the wedding too. Am I the a-hole for ordering food to go when my friend group wanted to split the check evenly? This has been an ongoing issue. I have a friend group that likes to eat nicer food. Personally, for me, I'm fine getting something cheap on the menu. The issue is they always want to split the check. I've had the conversation so many times that I want to pay for what I ordered. It results in an argument where I have to bend or everybody's mad at me. Yeah, I can already tell you're not the a-hole. They have absolutely no right to get upset at you for that. I also make a lot more money than my friends, so it always results in them basically calling me cheap. They don't get that I want to pay for my meal and that's it. Anyway, we went out to eat yesterday and they all ordered things that were around $30. I got the house salad and my total was 12. They told the server to split the bill and I didn't want to fight about it again. So I asked the server to add onto the bill an entree and a dessert for me to take home. And this resulted in my bill going up to the 30s. So they asked me what I was doing. I told them I was getting more food. They got upset that I increased the price that they needed to pay. This resulted in another argument and they think I'm a jerk. What? They don't even sound like good friends. Edit Reddit, I've done everything you've suggested. I've had the server take mine out and I pay for it. I've spoken to them. If I do anything that isn't splitting the bill with them, they get pissed. To be honest, OP, I wouldn't be going out to eat with these people. And also, I feel like that is the next step. Like, if they're not going to listen to you, and you're being completely reasonable, like this entire time, you've been paying money towards their food, and they don't sound grateful for that. You've got every right to just pay for the food that you get. And yeah, if they're still going to get pissy at you about it, I wouldn't go out to eat with them anymore if I were you. And if they ask you why, you can just say that. Like, I tried so many times 
times to explain to you that I only want to pay for my food, but every time you guys got upset at me, and also the fact that when you ordered the same amount of food as them, that they got upset at you for that? As in what, you're meant to get cheap stuff and pay for their food? Like yeah, the fact that they got upset at you for making it completely fair, I feel like that's such a red flag for these being sucky friends, but if they're so insistent on splitting the bill, maybe you should order way more food than everybody else and do to them what they've been doing to you. And also, I don't like how they called you cheap as well because you don't want to buy expensive stuff. Yeah, you're definitely not the a-hole OP. Am I the a-hole for telling my mother-in-law that she won't be seeing my baby after throwing a baby shower for herself? My husband and I are expecting our first child. We moved to be closer to his family. I'm no contact with mine. My mother-in-law has been referring to the baby as her baby this entire time. She'll say stuff like, I can't wait for my baby to be born. Oh God. <laughs> my baby is going to be so loved. This rubs me the wrong way for reasons I can't explain, but my husband tells me to ignore her. No, she shouldn't be saying stuff like that. That's super weird. It's not just you who thinks it OP. My mother-in-law wanted to throw me a baby shower and invite her friends. She said they made an agreement a long time ago that they'd celebrate each other's kids' weddings and births. Okay, this mother-in-law is so out of line. My husband and I eloped and we declined a reception for her friends since we don't know them. My mother-in-law told me that I owed it to her to let her throw the baby shower since I hurt her friend's feelings. Oh my god. By not having a wedding reception? I asked if I could invite my friends and she said no. What? <laughs> Is this a joke? I'd be no contact with the mother-in-law. She said no, that this was for her friends and that if my friends wanted to have a baby shower they could. I reluctantly agreed. My husband and I spent hours on our registry and my mother-in-law was asking for it so she could share it with her friends. She said that she forwarded the registry. She asked me what design I wanted on my cake and cookies. I told her flowers because I'm decorating the nursery in a garden theme. At the shower, they provided me with a mother-to-be sash and my mother-in-law a granny-to-be sash to wear. I noticed that the theme of the shower was circus animals. The cake had an elephant and balloons on it and the cookies were animals. At first I thought that maybe the floral theme was just too difficult, so I rolled with it until it was time to open presents. Every present was some sort of circus animal. Onesies, blankets, toys, nothing on my registry. I was a little confused and I even went so far as to check my registry to make sure I hadn't goofed up and changed anything. I thanked everybody for their gifts and I tried to sound as gracious as possible, but I was so confused. My husband, who's a little less tactful than I am, showed up at the end of the shower and noticed the theme right away. He goes, what's up with the circus animals? He looks at the presents and says, this isn't what we asked for. Then he looked at his mum and goes, mum, what did you do? She smiled and said, I didn't like the theme you chose for my baby. I'm going to decorate my baby's nursery at my house with circus animals. So I created a registry for myself. My husband said, you did what? She says, my baby is going to need a room at my house. So I threw a shower for myself. I lost my composure and I told her that she would not see my baby and to stop calling the baby hers. And my husband told his mum that she's delusional if she thinks we're going to allow this. She started crying and said that we were just withholding her baby from her. What? We've been getting texts from the family since the shower, calling us selfish and ungrateful and saying that we ruined her joy of being a grandma. Oh, get out of here. Are we the a-hole? Is this real? Like, did we really just read that? Oh, you ruined her joy of being a grandma. They don't want to be the grandma. They want to take your kid. Of course you're not the a-hole. The mother-in-law is out of their mind. Absolutely unhinged and delusional. And yeah, don't go along with it for even a second, OP. Oh, I can't believe that. That's infuriating. I can't even imagine how you and your husband feel. The top comment says, not the a-hole. Make sure if she has keys to your home that the locks are changed. Make sure you invest in security cameras. Let the hospital know that your mother-in-law is to be nowhere near your baby. Let them know that you and your husband are the only two that fill out any paperwork. Honestly, no contact from the start. That way she has no grandparent visitation case. Document every creepy thing she does. Call your doctor and tell your pediatrician at the time to password protect your medical information. Your mother-in-law is unhinged and this has hands that rock the cradle vibes. Yeah, you're so not the a-hole OP. And what the hell are the other family members talking about? Saying that you're selfish and ungrateful? Don't listen to them for a second. The mother-in-law sounds wild. And yeah, not safe for your kid to be around them. The mother-in-law is showing you so many different red flags. Yeah, you're not the a-hole OP. Am I the a-hole for not continuing my reception after my husband went behind my back? My now husband Lucas, 26, and I, female, 25, were getting married. We decided to tie the knot as we're having a little girl together and we're madly in love. So leading up to the wedding day, Lucas told me that his best man, Jacob, wanted to propose to his girlfriend as it would be a great time and it's a nice venue to do it at. I said that I didn't want him to propose at our wedding 
wedding, as it's our special moment, not theirs, and they can do it sometime else. Lucas told me that his friend was mad that I didn't agree. I just wanted the wedding to be about us because it was our special day. After that disagreement, I thought nothing of it. Fast forward to my wedding day, we'd finished the church service and now we're at the reception and we're all having fun eating. I'm eating my food and then Jacob stops the music at the DJ booth to make an announcement. I just knew from that moment he was going to propose. I looked to see where Lucas was and he was holding red and white roses, walking out to stand in front of Chloe, Jacob's girlfriend, spelling out, will you marry me? I was shocked that they went behind my back when I said no. I got up out of my seat and I walked out. It's been two days since the wedding and my husband cursed me out for not letting them have a special moment. I responded with, I wanted the day to be about us because it's our wedding, not theirs. And I am happy for them, but the worst thing was that even though I said no, you went behind my back about it. Since that argument, he moved out to the guest bedroom and now most of my friends are cursing me out on all of my socials. Am I the a-hole? Nah, you're right, OP. Not only was it your wedding day, but yeah, they went behind your back. Ew. You're getting married to celebrate your love together. If anybody's gonna have your back and not go behind your back, it's your partner. And the fact that they did sucks. The top comment says, not the a-hole, not the a-hole, not the a-hole. There are so many different posts on here and on the revenge forums about a-holes who propose at other people's weddings. It's a terrible thing to do. And I'm surprised his girlfriend didn't turn down the engagement for doing something like that. If he wanted a nice venue, he should have paid for a nice dinner or something. Not use the celebration you just spent thousands of dollars on to make it about him. I'd be requesting the cost of their meals back. And the fact that your new husband went behind your back is also pretty terrible. Your friends who are cursing you out on social can easily be removed from your life. Your husband though, I think this is something that will have to be discussed in couples counselling so he can see what a selfish backhanded thing he did. Yeah, a million percent. If everything you've said is true, I don't feel like you're in the wrong OP. Am I the a for changing my name after my dad gave it to his affair, baby? I, female 20, have a half-sister, female 7. That's a product of my dad's affair. And he thought it would be an amazing idea to give her my name. He started forcing us to get to know each other as siblings. And my mum, being the traditional wife that she is, led her into our home. Don't get me wrong, I don't hate the child because I understand that she's innocent in all of this. I'm actually working on getting over it and learning to love and accept her. However, I despise the fact that my dad decided to give her my name. I started hating my own name and I didn't want to be associated with it anymore. So the moment I got to college, I introduced myself under a different name to everybody. I got a certificate which had my new name on it. And when my dad saw it, he went berserk, claiming that I don't like his child and I don't respect her. My mum is also angry at him for what he did, especially since the name was given to me by her and not him. Whoa, okay, that one's interesting. But yeah, God, no, you're not the a-hole OP. That's so bloody weird. Are they trying to have a second you or something? What's his reasoning behind it. And yeah, pretty much like this comment says, not the a-hole. It's like he wanted to recreate you. It's creepy. I'm sorry this happened to you, OP. Am I the a-hole for telling a stranger that I'm not her therapist and to stop interrupting my checkout at the store? I feel like we don't have to read this. You're probably not the a-hole. I was at a bookstore last night after work. When I got to the register, it was empty. A moment later, an employee came back around with another customer. The other customer got in line behind me while still chatting with the employee. I could tell the employee was a little uncomfortable as she called me forward. The other customer stood literally right behind me as the employee kept doing the brush off of, yeah, oh really? Wow. The other customer was talking about how she'd recently been diagnosed with cancer, going into details about the treatments that she'd need, etc. Finally, she was quiet when it was all clear the employee was focused on my transaction and trying to ask the whole, do you have a rewards card? Do you want one? Etc. That's when the other customer turned to me and started giving me the same story. I said I was sorry to hear about her diagnosis and I went back to speaking to the employee. The customer still kept talking right in my ear saying, yeah, I'm so pissed. Why'd this have to happen to me? Finally, I told her, you need to back up and give me some space. Stop interrupting our conversation. She started saying, I have cancer. I need to vent. I said, again, sorry to hear that, but we're not your therapist. Back up. She backed up and went silent. Employee looked relieved. I told my wife what happened and she told me that I was rude. The woman was clearly going through something. I said, as a former retail worker, I despise people who unload their days on me and she was clearly making the employee uncomfortable while also standing right next to me. My wife said that I was still wrong. Am I the a-hole? No, you're not the a-hole. Like, yeah, you feel sorry for him, but it's super unfair what they're doing. And like this comment says, not the a-hole. She needed to be told. I've worked retail and this is a hard situation. You can't be rude and at the same time, this person is making it very hard for you to do your job. She needed to vent, no doubt, but she can't go around talking at strangers like that. Yeah, definitely. You did the right thing by saying something. 
thing. And I also don't really feel like what you said was that rude. Am I the a for not wanting to give my nephew a puppy after he attempted to steal one from me? I'm 25 female. My dog Dove had puppies. She's a golden lab. I promised my nephew Dion 10 that he could have one of the puppies when they're ready. He was so excited. So last week when Dion and my sister came over, he asked if he could see the puppies, which I said yes. He went in to see them. Me and my sister were catching up. Then we heard Dove barking, which alerted me to go check on Dion and Dove. Dion was standing in the corner with his hands behind his back. We could hear the puppy's muffled cries and I pulled him forward and I'd found that he'd put the puppy in a plastic bag. I told him off and I asked him what he was doing. He started crying and said that he wanted the puppy now and that he was taking this one home. I told him no. You already know that they're too young and that they need their mother's milk. Dion had a tantrum. My sister had to take him home. Dove was understandably agitated and was now wary on who comes nearer pups. I decided over a couple of days that I didn't trust Dion to have one of them. So when my sister came out to visit, I told her that I didn't want to give Dion one of the puppies after what he did. She got upset with me and said it was a mistake and he learned his lesson. I said he didn't even apologize. She said what for? The puppy was fine. Oh, come on. I got angry then and I said what if Dove hadn't alerted us? The puppy could have died. She said I was going to break his heart if I go back on my promise. I said I'm sorry but that's my final decision and she left angry. I've since been getting people on my back about breaking my promise and that I'm a liar. I even got a video message of Dion crying and calling me names. I'm starting to feel bad. Am I the a-hole? No, you're not the a-hole. Of course you're not going to trust him with a puppy. Like, how could you trust him with a puppy? And the bit where you said that he didn't apologize and your sister was like, what for? That's so frustrating. Like, what do you mean what for? Yeah, you're not the a-hole, OP. And like the top comment says, absolutely not the a-hole. One, you don't put a living animal in a plastic bag. Two, you can't reasonably expect to receive a dog if you've tried to steal it. You can't shoplift from a store, get caught, and then try to remain in good standing as a customer. Same thing applies here. Number three, it's your choice what happens to the puppies, and it's your choice who you sell them to, not her. And four, you're not a liar. Had Dion not stolen the puppy or hid it from you, and scared the mum, you would have kept your promise. However, the situation changed, and therefore the promise is void. I'd keep a good eye on your puppies to make sure she doesn't try and take one for themselves. Yeah, that bit at the end there about the promise is so true. Like, yeah, you promised them that they could have a puppy, but obviously after what they did, that's going to change. And how do they not expect that? Surely they realize they're in the wrong, don't they? But they really want a puppy or something? Yeah, you're so not the a-hole, OP. Am I the a-hole for not participating in my fiance's weird Christmas underwear tradition? This year, I celebrated Christmas with my fiance's family for the first time before we went to my fiance's parents' house. My fiance warned me that his parents usually come short in the amount of food they cook for Christmas dinner and that there's often not enough for everybody. What I didn't expect though was to be expected to participate in the family's weird tradition. Apparently they've got a long-standing tradition where instead of drawing straws, they'll throw all of their underwear into a bin and then go and take turns wearing a blindfold and drawing a pair of underwear from the pile. And drawing the smallest pair of underwear correlates to drawing the smallest straw. What? <laughs> Ew. I'd never heard of this tradition so I felt blindsided when right before Christmas dinner, my fiance's mum yelled out that it was time to pull the straws to decide the order of who got to plate up their food first in case there wasn't enough for everybody. At first I thought the family was joking when they announced this, so I laughed, which made my fiance get real defensive. I volunteered to get my food last so I wouldn't have to participate, but my fiance just got even more annoyed and asked me to just try to be a bit more agreeable. Oh, get out of here. The whole thing was kind of weirding me out, so I called an Uber and I went home. Now things are real tense between me and my fiance. Since now he says I made a bad impression by acting like I was too good for their family tradition. Am I the a-hole? Is this a joke? <laughs> fiance, OP didn't make a bad impression. Your family made a super weird first impression by doing this. That's hilarious. It doesn't even sound fun. I don't understand what possibly is even good about this. Like how is that not just a giant pain? It's weird and there's no way that's fun. And they're doing it to decide the order of who got to plate up their food first. Hey family, you can literally just talk to each other. <laughs> you don't need to play with each other's underwear, you bunch of weirdos. And the fact that the fiance is getting upset at you for not doing this. If I were in your shoes, OP, I would be completely convinced that they were joking. The top comment says, what the hell? Not the a-hole. This doesn't seem like it could possibly be real, but I also don't know how you'd even come up with this, so I'm inclined to believe you. Number one, it's gross as hell to have to touch other people's dirty underwear, even more so when they're not people you're directly related to or particularly close to. Number two, 
It's weird and embarrassing to have your underwear on display for everybody. Plus, imagine your underwear being the smallest or the largest pair, or having a period stain on it or discharge. My in-laws should never see my underwear, and I don't know if I'd feel worse about them seeing the tiny sexy ones or the more full coverage ones I wear on my period. And number three, they have to know that this is not a normal thing. You could have and should have been warned. And number four, this problem could have been easily fixed by them simply making more bloody food or asking guests to bring a dish to share so there'd be enough to go around. Once again, not the a-hole. I would have noped right out of there too. And if I were you, I'd tell your fiance that I am too good for their family tradition because it's weird and trashy. Yeah, it is. It's so gross. And what a dumb tradition. <laughs> I can't get over this. It can't be real, can it? And yeah, that's right. Why are they taking it so serious? And the fact that the fiance is upset at you? Yeah, no, they can do that. I would have left as well. Like, oh yeah, okay. I'll just take my underwear off and put it in a bin with all of your underwear. What the hell? <laughs> and I still can't believe the fiance was mad at you. What a joke. And yeah, like that comment said, you can just ask somebody to bring some more food. You don't have to touch each other's underwear. And yeah, that's enough for today. We need to read something wholesome so bad. I need to forget about that post really fast. So my mum told me this story about how my aunt and uncle ran into a celebrity at a bar and they became friends with him and she couldn't remember his name. My aunt just sent me these pictures. Wow, that's so funny. They're chilling with Matthew McConaughey. There's some really good photos. Yeah, that's so wholesome. Garfield is a cat and doesn't have a job. The only ostensible difference between Monday and any other day is that John suddenly isn't around after him being home all weekend. Garfield doesn't hate Mondays. He loves John and he's too proud to say it. Yeah, well, that's so cute. And yeah, that makes sense. It's probably not true, but it's definitely wholesome. Somebody once told me the story of somebody who reads AF as, as foretold, as in this taco is spicy AF, was read as this taco is spicy as foretold. I don't remember who it was, but I'm here to thank him. I now also read it this way. Wow, that's so awesome. Never ever heard that before. But yeah, it definitely works. Your time has come. Oh, hey friend, you got some toilet paper on your shoe there. Uh, thanks. So death crosses him off the list. That's so beautiful. And yeah, that's right. You need to always be kind. That's a good life lesson. And on that note, thank you for watching everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did and you want to see more Am I the Yay Hole, make sure you like and subscribe. And the comment of the day today goes to Random Bookworm. I love listening to these videos while walking my puppy. I enjoy videos like this in the sea of robot voices and fake stories. Oh, thank you. That means the world. I'm glad you enjoyed the episodes. And yeah, I'm definitely not a robot, even though that's what a robot would say. I promise, guys, I'm a real person. And yeah, thank you for the support. And also thank you for the kind words. That was a wild episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you come back tomorrow at the same time, I'll have a brand new episode ready. So with that being said, make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!